And last, we have an explanation for John Sargent's success on the dance floor, apart from the obvious, that is, it's written in his genes. And, what's more, it says a lot about him as a potential mate, though perhaps we shouldn't dwell on that too much. Anyway, researchers at Herefordshire University have discovered that the figure men cut on the dance floor says a lot more about us than you might think, and they've come up with a novel way of testing their theory. Our science correspondent Tom Fielden applied their own test to them. What we're seeing here is a um, small, simple dance movement. It's a very simple structure, and you could easily miss this person dancing if you saw them on a dance floor. Cognitive psychologist Dr Peter Lovett takes his research very seriously. So seriously, in fact, that in a fine tradition of scientific endeavour that includes Galileo and Faraday, he's experimenting on himself. So we started off, that was a very small move and very simple. But on this video, as the arms are opening, the legs are closing. Although it's virtually open. impossible to tell because the images have been blurred out, the man performing these classic disco moves is actually Dr Lovett, who was, in an earlier incarnation, he tells me, a professional dancer. So that's a slightly more complicated dance manoeuvre than the original. Yes, this dance here requires more coordination of the body parts, but otherwise it's visually very similar. It looks a bit more groovy than the other two, doesn't it? I mean, the first two I would describe as dad dancing at a wedding, uh -huh. and this one strikes me as being a bit of a younger chap in a disco. That's right, yeah. It's got a bit more life to it. In all, there are 12 short videos, and in each one, the scale and complexity of the dance steps is subtly different. Peter Lovett's been playing these to women and asking them to rate his performance for attractiveness, dominance, masculinity and overall quality on a scale from one to seven. People didn't like small, simple movements, but they did like small, random movements. So people who don't take up much space on the dance floor, but put a lot of variation into their dance style, women found those sort of dance movements the most attractive. And we also found that almost an opposite effect, that when men were dancing in a very large way, a very David Brent type way, this was seen to be very unattractive. <coughs> so clearly John Travolta wins out over David Brent. Well, it's interesting. John Travolta does, but it's not the case that John Travolta wins because he had a wonderfully choreographed dance routine. So men don't go out and choreograph a dance routine and learn it and go onto the dance floor. What's attractive about Travolta's dancing is the size of the dancing and the level of variation in the movements that Travolta uses. It might seem bizarre, but previous research shows a strong correlation between the attractiveness ratings women give to men and those men's exposure to testosterone in the womb, generally regarded as an indicator of genetic quality. And it turns out that men whose fourth finger is considerably longer than their second and whose physical features like ear shape and limb dimensions are broadly symmetrical were exposed to higher levels of prenatal testosterone. Dr Lovett wants to know if the courtship ritual of dance is working in a similar way, whether men's moves on the dance floor are subtly communicating their underlying genetic fitness as a potential mate. And that's where you come in. So we're now outside the Western Auditorium of the University of Hertfordshire. All this Public week, campus. visitors to the University of Hertfordshire's yeah, Health and Human Sciences Showcase will be able to pop into a booth, throw a few shapes in front of a video camera, and then have their fingers and ears measured to assess their level of prenatal dance. testosterone. Men will be able to dance in here, and we might even have a few lights in here as well, flashing, um, to kind of simulate the effect of, uh, of being, being in a dance, a social dance. So hello. What we'll do now is to try and diagnose your dancing style. And just in case you can't make it to Hatfield, don't worry, you can still take part from the comfort of your own living room by logging onto our website, watching Peter's short video and filling in a simple questionnaire. So which of those dance styles most fits the size of your dancing? It's either small, medium, large or very large. So if your foot's tapping along as you're listening to this, why not dedicate that urge to get up and dance to the benefit of medical science? And who knows, you may even pick up a few pointers on your technique.
Very nice jiving, John. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was rather pleased with it myself. If you want to take part in the genes experiment, you can find the details on Tom's blog.